on the top because you can't stop when he's on. Time's what he's saying it will leave you in a day. But you gotta put close attention because you can't put a word inside. We ways. got crazy mad societies, we're all a bunch of freaks. We got crazy mad solutions when he talks before he thinks. When I need a couple spots, like money ain't a thing, man. I got a side job coming raps over in England. Off the top, cause he's ready to blow. Yes, drugs, crystal bow. Off the top, cause he's ready to blow. Yes, drugs, crystal bow. He's the only one that ever beat me in a sweating contest Cause if you can't take the heat, you're getting kicked out the kitchen You get the dry white toast, he's got the two whole chicken He got away with the ladies, they're always taking him home to mother And she answers the door, she's like, I see you met your father It's obvious, his mouth is gonna get him in trouble Yo, Bill, call the bar, get the bail on the double Pop the top, cause he's ready to blow Sex, drugs, Christian to blow Pop the top, cause he's ready to blow Sex, drugs, Christian to blow Episode of Sex Drugs, Chris Neville! I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, episode 211, 211, I've been trying to come up with cool little rhymes ever since we went past two fucking hundred, and I'm gonna go 211, 211, didn't I already say this was seven, but it makes me feel like I'm in heaven. I don't know what it is, 211 feels fucking special, it's gonna be one of those ones, you know what Michael, it feels like it's been two weeks since we last been here, but we were here seven days ago, were we not? It feels like two weeks. You feel like two weeks on this one? It's weird like time warp shit. It put, could be all the medicine I'm taking. All the medicine I'm taking. Very special medicine that could give you the time warpies. Now, we have a very special episode in store for you tonight. SidsValleyTalk.com's always bringing in. Sex Choice Chris Devold's always bringing it, but tonight is very special. We kind of have some local music royalty in the house tonight. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna talk great detail about Keeney Nation 6, the sixth damn year that this is going off. My third year emceeing. Ladies and gentlemen in the house tonight, Mike Keeney Sr. Is it the last year? No. Don't lie to me, is it the last year? I signed up for 10 years. You signed up, he's in for a contract for 10 years. And I'm holding F Fulton 55 to it. And if Fulton 55 ever closes, which it never will, we'll do it in the damn street. We'll do have Keeney Nation 47 in the street. I want to be dead and watching the ghost of my grandchildren going downtown Fresno to Keeney Nation 103. I want something weird like that going on now. Right, right, oh man, that would be great. Freeze me up and thaw me up for that shit, all right? Now, let's go ahead and talk about this, all right? Anybody wear glasses in the house? Woo! Wait, I don't know if that's anything you cheer for though, babe. That was really cool though. You know, like when, anyone from New York, girl, yeah! Does anyone wear glasses? She's all, that's my shit! Like, what? Four eyes for life, all right? I started wearing glasses in the second grade, been wearing them ever since. Some of the people, some of the people do the contact lenses. They do the contact lenses, all right? I can't do the contact lens. I don't want to touch my eyeball. It's wet, it's, it's circular, it's round. If I'm going to be touching anything like that, it's certainly not going to be an eyeball, all right? Oh, yeah. No, it's never going to be a damn eyeball, all right? So let's talk about this bullshit real quick, all right? I don't know if you guys heard about this. How many contact lenses would you say is too many contact lenses in the eye? Wouldn't more than one be more than enough? What? Two. Two? Two? 27. Doctors removed 27 contact lenses from a woman's eye. Let's think about this. I don't know. Let's fucking do it together. How does this shit happen? Ready? One. Two. Three. Around three or four, once you realize something's wrong, four. Five. I may be fucking up at this point. Six. Should I give some to the other eye? Seven. Now let's just keep going. Eight. Well, I think 27 is a strong number. Nine, 10. Wouldn't they stack up? Wouldn't you not be able to close your eye? Maybe one behind her eye somehow. No, no, no. I, I hope not. And then you're the doctor. She comes into the ER and she's, okay, first off, she's got to look like shit coming in, all right? She's got to look like one eye Ahab walking through the damn door. And then secondly, how does that look? Have you ever stacked 27? Con These are things I've never done. How do you even know what contact lenses look like? That many stacked in the damn eye? 
I, I want to do it now. I want to put 20. No, I know, but I'm, now that I'm hearing it, I'm almost seeing how she was intrigued. Maybe she was just trying to prove a point to herself. Maybe she had a couple too many beers. Maybe she smoked a joint. Maybe it was a slow Saturday night. She's Netflixed out. She can't watch shit. I don't know, 100 layers, maybe she couldn't get to 100, maybe she got to 27 and said, this is a grave mistake. I should have stopped around 16, 17. I'm thinking, like I said, around three or four is when I realize I'm fucking up. Like, no matter how drunk I am or how partied out I am, they're like, are you guys just going to keep letting him put those things on his eyes? I'm all, 19, 20. Like, something is wrong when you're letting that shit happen to yourself. Now, uh, and you know those, uh, you used to get them in uh, cereal, cereal. You take it and you flip it inside out and set it on a table, and then it pops itself in the air. You remember those fucking things? It was like a little circle. Turn it inside out, put it on, pop it in the fucking air. Now I went to the school with a kid, uh, his name rhymes with Robert Potter. Oh fuck, that was his name. I'm sorry. His name rhymes with Smarter Notter. Uh, but anyways, Robert Potter, <laughs> I keep fucking up. Well, here's what he did, all right? He took the motherfucking thing, and instead of putting it upside down on the table, man, it pop up in the air, he turned it inside out, and then he put it over his eyeball. And then he proceeded to let it go. Now when that bastard flipped inside out, you know what it was doing? It was trying to suck his eyeball out of his own socket. It was the best thing ever. This, it was eighth grade. This son of a bitch showed up to school with the patch on his eye and had a story for everyone. And I'll tell you what, normally you get hurt and you can go to school like junior high and tell a fucking story. Hey man, how'd you break your arm? Well, I was up on my roof lighting some firecrackers off and I fucking fell. Like, that's a story that gets chicks like, he's a little dangerous. You can't be that guy that's like, Robert, what's up with the patch on your eye? Well, you know the popper that comes in cereal? I took it and I put it over my eye. Yeah, no, that's not gonna fucking work. And the dude was our student council president. The dude was the leader of the fucking eighth grade. And this was our fucking leader putting cereal fucking poppers over his eye, all right? I was from Lemoore. Did I mention I lived on the naval base? I don't want that to fucking eschew anybody's view, but maybe that could have something to do with the Lemoore school system. He's out there somewhere as an adult and I bet he has children. And you can't get mad at your kid when they almost pop out your eye when you did it in fucking eighth grade. Now, anybody loves sausage in here? And it's not going to be a gay euphemism. If we love... Okay, you answered wrong for all the wrong reasons, okay? I'm telling you, I know that you love it. I know you do, personally. We're not going to get into this, but I will later. No, we're not going to do this now, all right? Let's stay on topic. All right, let's talk. Um, first off, let's talk. It's the middle of the summer. You know Santa Claus ain't coming till December, right? You know Santa Claus ain't coming till Saturday still. It's like, what, five months still? It's going to be okay, right? But then you hear a thud. You hear a click clack on the, on the top of your roof. You're like, holy shit, could Santa be early? Was I that good? That fat bastard's going to show up and bring me some gifts early? Or, or could it be 15 pounds of sausage? Yes, no. A guy in Florida, and by the way, by the way, I'll name drop, I'll name drop. When I worked with Jen Lip for two years at The Blaze, I'll fucking name drop, and I'll tell her I name dropped her damn name. She would always tell me, hey, Devon, you'll notice that when I do the freak news, all the stories come out of Florida. And I was like, yeah, what are you doing? Going to some Florida website, getting weird news? She goes, no, when I comb the underbelly of the internet, it just seems that all the weird stories come out of fucking Florida. You'll notice that all the weird stories come out of Florida. So here we are, 15 pounds of fucking sausage meat and pork fall on this guy's roof, okay? Now, the bag was marked, I want to get this, Williams Land Service. Help me out, guys. Anybody know what a land service would be doing with that much fucking <laughs> sausage? <laughs> Dropping it out of a fucking airplane? How about this? They called up Williams Land Service and they're like, hey, missing 15 pounds of sausage, you bitches? And they're like, no, uh, we, we don't even know what you're talking about. What do you, what do you mean, sausage? They have no uh, record of the bag on any inventory of any flight. There is no flight. They do not uh, do this type of shit. And it fell out. It's, come on. It's fallen out of a plane. Either that or what kind of rich son of a bitch has a private plane and gets 15 pounds of sausage and just drops it? Is that like dog shit in someone's porch when you're a rich bastard? It's like, hey, what are you doing? Well, me and Margo going up in the private jet today and we're going to fuck around with some people. Yeah, what are you going to do? We're going to drop 15 pounds of sausage on the roof. Like, what the fuck? You're going to do what? And now I'm intrigued. And now the rich guy down the street just became a possible friend. I'm like, you're sick like me. 15 pounds of sausage on someone's roof. They don't even mention if the guy had any enemies. 
What kind of enemies you making where someone's dropping 15 pounds of fucking sausage on your roof? That's a new level. What happened to just fighting it out in the street or fucking maybe just a, a little phone conversation? Now that's some next level shit and it has me thinking, all right? Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. Anybody uh, believe in fucking robots taking over Terminator 2 shit? The day Cyberdyne fucking became, what did it became self-aware? That's when the robots fucking turn on us. Judgment day, if you will. Well, let's talk about this. This company has a robot that's been patrolling its fucking area as a security guard, okay? This robot is a 300 pounder. He's a big boy. They got a devolved roaming around out there, fucking robot, Mr. Roboto in it. When we come back after the break, I'm gonna let you know what happened to this fucking robot. Now, I don't know if it has a gun coming out of a tip like Robocop, but God, if it does, I want three of them, okay? CentralLATalk.com, Sex, Drugs, Chris Ball is what the fuck you're watching. Did I mention that my Keeney Senior's in the house? We're gonna talk all things Keeney Nation 6 in a little bit. Slide the knob, not 15 pounds of sausage. Don't do it. Who will well, woman well, nasty centralatalk.com sex drugs crystal balls what the fuck you watching hopefully refill the weed bowl the cereal bowl hopefully you got yourself another beer maybe you got chocolate milk five chocolate milk I'd be blowing bubbles in mine Oh, uh, some say they know who Bubbles is, but really, really, they don't. Sam, I am in the house tonight. Good to see you, Sam, I am. You're looking a little more mature, a little older. Perhaps someone had a birthday? Yeah, we didn't get to participate in it, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know if it gets someone worse when you got to get them the after-birthday shots and beers because you're like the only... It's like you almost have control over what you can do to the birthday person. It's not like at a party where you're like, well, we better take it easy on them because they're going to get them shots. They're going to get them fucked up. It's like, no, we can pick any Saturday that we're hanging out or even Friday that you don't know and then just bring a bunch of shit and be like, well, happy birthday. You got to drink this shit now, Sam, I am. And that's going to work out great. You just can't let your beard have any. You drink it all, your beard gets none. Sometimes you got a BAC of like .02 and your fucking beard is like .16 and I don't know how... Yeah, and then you gotta suck on the beard, which is quite interesting altogether. That brings up all sorts of weird little questions. Now, I was talking about a 300 pound robot and no, I'm not talking about this fucking machine. <laughs> no, I'm talking about... Okay, so this robot's uh, patrolling this fucking complex, okay, you guys? Have you heard about this? It's some fucking bullshit. Now... Terminator 2 Judgment Day can never fucking happen if the robots are doing dumb shit like this. This robot's patrolling this fucking area, all right? Now, uh, this robot fell and it went into some water. Um, it kind of got fucked up. And a lot of fucking scientists and people worked really hard on this shit, okay? A lot of people put a lot of nerds and they're like, mm, we worked on this robot very long. And then it fucking falls and it goes and it, you can't have a 300 pound fucking robot. Look at them. Look at them trying to get this dome-looking son of a bitch robot, this piece of shit. Look at this thing. You want to know why I'm so bitter toward this robot? Do you realize how much money was fucking devoted to making this robot? Do you realize how much money I would like to have just because of that? I, oh, I'm going to build a robot. Can I get some? There's grant money. People donated money. People put a lot of faith in that damn robot. And there it is lying in the fucking... Look at it laying on the side like a bastard. Look at that robot. Can I be mad at a robot? It doesn't have emotion, Chris. It won't know you're mad at it. Well, then fuck you, robot. Look at that. That, that could be people's rent money right there. I'm mad. Am I taking a stand against dumb inventions? Yes. No more dumb inventions. Give me something better. Give me some as seen on TV shit that's gonna fucking impress me, all right? Now, let's go ahead and there's, there's some important shit we gotta talk about, all right? There's some things that we really need to talk about and I want you guys to know a little something about this. There was a man, all right? I almost sound like I'm gonna best out in a song or something. There was a man. I'm gonna leave this up to the Keenies tonight, okay? But there was a man, okay? He... Now, okay, you guys, I work at a financial institution. Let's just get it out there, all right? I work at a financial institution, all right? Yay, yeah, slave away for the man. You know what? Even fucking Batman had a fucking day job, all right? So shut the hell up, all right? Everybody has a day job, right? And then you, and then you go back to what you do, the shit that makes you you, all right? So let me talk about this. There was this guy who got locked in an ATM. I don't know if you guys heard about this son of a bitch. He got locked in an ATM. He was working on an ATM at the bank. He got, he got locked kind of in the machine, okay? And you gotta think, I'm a big boy. I am a big boy. If I get locked, <laughs> what are you doing over there? I'm like, I am a big boy. She's like, yes. Yes, this motherfucker is. Thank you, babe, thank you. And by the way, we're still gonna go eat after the show, right? Oh, thank God. I got worried, all right? Now, this guy got locked into an ATM. Now, he's, he's trying to get out. 
He, his phone, his phone is dead at this point. It's 2017. I'm thinking, use your phone, man. Use your phone. Well, his phone was dead, and so he's thinking of a way. Now, I gotta ask you guys, you're stuck in an ATM. What do you do to get out? How do you get out? <laughs> Put your pin number in. All of a sudden, the gate opens up. You're like, fuck, I can get to my weekend now. Thank God. All right, now you're stuck in ATM. What do you do? What do you do? How do you get out? A bus is going 55. What, you, what were you saying? All right, shove money out the hole. Now, first off, that sounds like the kinkiest night I've ever heard of in my life. If I was walking by and heard anyone talking and I heard, and then I started shoving money out the hole. I'm gonna be like, it's okay, I wanna hear what these guys are talking about. Uh, you're very close, okay? He actually slid, there it is. He, it's coming up, he slid a note. There's the note. Please help. I'm in here, I'm stuck in the ATM. And I do not have my phone. Call in, <laughs> call my boss. That's the 210 area code. Uh, I believe that's down in, was that Texas? We get crazy, a little Texas action. Uh, you would think he would have had his gun on him. I know a lot of, I, I am from Texas. There, <laughs> what's he saying? Shot his way out. He could have shot his way out. Now, I have, has anybody ever been stuck or locked in a situation? Let me tell you a story. I don't talk sex, I, okay, I don't talk sports or politics on Sex, Drugs, Christopher. 211 episodes, we do not talk sports, we do not talk politics, because it's the one, it's the one or two things people always fight over, you know? People will fight over that shit, alright? But let me tell you a story, I'm a big Texas Longhorns fan, alright? Right. Okay, well, Texas Longhorns, we're gonna play Alabama in uh, the national championship, alright? Now I'm coming home. Oh man, Colt McCoy. That was the night Colt McCoy went down like the first 20 minutes of the game. I can't, we can't, no! We can't talk sports. I just need to tell you what happened in regards to this game. Now, what happens is, is for whatever reason, um, uh, my significant other at the time, this has to be told, she was using my car. She was using my car. She had my keys. I thought I had the extra house key. Can you imagine, I'm going home. Uh, I got beer. We're going to get some takeout. I'm going to watch the national championship. It's already started. If I, if I can get in and get it out of the DVR, I can catch up to live TV so nobody fucks up what's actually going on in the game. As I get dropped off by a coworker at home, I realize, oh, man, I don't have my keys to the apartment. Oh, shit, the game's happening right now. Oh, 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 I know what I can do. I can scale the fence because we were on the bottom level, and as you walk up the stairs to get to the second level, you could walk kind of on the outside of the stairs, like on the back, outside of the railing, and you could step over my fucking backyard fence. So let me tell you, this big guy was fucking willing to do it. So I'm on the other side of the stairs, and then I go over the fence, and our table wasn't very strong in the back. It had two little barbecue grills on it. I was, I was gonna try to stand on it, and I got one leg on it, and I could hear, it was like the creak of an old man with like three fat sumo wrestlers on his back. It was like, and I was like, not stepping on the table, all right? So I pulled the leg back, and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna have to hop off. So I hopped down, and there was really no plan after that. I was thinking maybe I could wedge something in the sliding door. At first I was thinking maybe we didn't lock the sliding door. Now here's the, uh, the really bad part. Um, she had left the TV on when she took off to go run the couple errands in my car, and she had it on the channel. The fucking game was on. So not only can I not get in, but now I'm seeing Colt McCoy, the quarterback, on the ground. I'm seeing my team lose. Uh, uh, by the way, I said I had the beer. I didn't have the beer because I remember thinking beer was in the fridge and I couldn't get to it because I would have drank all those motherfuckers out there and just I would have sat there and enjoyed the game from the patio and just pretend I wanted to be out there. Like, oh, I want to be out here drinking, you know? And yeah, this is this is how I planned it, and I'm just waiting for her to get home. Oh no. I, I tried everything. I had that door moving up and down, and for the life of me, no one could get in. Now, I, like I said, I used to live in fucking Lemoore in base housing. I could just get a little straight slash screwdriver or get my key in there a little and just turn it, pop that damn thing right open. Oh no! And then by the way, did I mention she stopped back over by her mom's in the car? So now, I've, I've watched the whole game, the post game's on. I didn't have a cell phone at the time. And then she finally comes home, finally comes home. And uh, we got Carl's Jr. We got Carl's Jr. And, the, and you ready, ready? That, that most happiest part of the whole story, ready? Here we go. Uh, as we were going through the Carl's Jr. bag, there was a rolled up $100 bill in it. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know if it was that sweet guy upstairs going, look, you, 
You poor bastard, it was just a prank, all right? It was just a prank, a joke, just wanted to watch you sweat a little bit, Devold. Here's a hundred bucks for your, for your, for your trouble, for your trouble. Now, the sad part of it was when I went back to work, everybody knew that I was a Texans fan. By the way, don't make it very clear at your workplace who your favorite fucking sports teams are, because you will pick up the most shit. Nobody even watches fucking, like, football or basketball, and all of a sudden people will be walking by going, <laughs> How about them Spurs? They really fucked up, huh, Chris? And I'm like, you don't even watch basketball! Yeah, but you're a Spurs fan, right? Man, that must suck. I'm like, you son of a bitch. It's like, why don't you just walk by and fucking... All right, so here we go. Uh, we'll talk sports for the first time on Sex, Drugs, Christopher. We're going to do it because Keeney's in the house. Keeney, do you like sports? No. Perfect. <laughs> Can I get a round of applause for that? I think that's the universe and the man upstairs telling me not to talk sports on the show. Did you see I was willing to go there and talk sports <laughs> and the very first person I asked answered back? I don't have a fucking team, Devold. What do you want from me, all right? Like, I don't have a team. Now, hey, real quick, Katie, what's the best band you've ever seen uh, live that you would say, ever? Like, all the shows you've been to, all the shows, what's the best band you think you've ever seen live? Skater, or person? Skater had a good night. Really? Yeah. Well, and uh, how many, how many, did you see them more than once? 27 times. Holy fuck! Can we back that Skinner train up for a couple seconds? You saw Leonard Skinner 27 times? Yes, sir. Oh, man. I don't even know I could do something I really, really like 27 times in a row. They're like, nope, Chris, keep going. One more. Well, how many years was it spanned over? 27 years. It was, it was, was it like once a year, pretty steady? We, well, when me and Michael went on the cruise, we seen him six times on that, so you know, like, uh, just about once every two years. Holy hell. You know, I was telling her that the band Korn, when I started going to a bunch of concerts, Korn was opening for everyone. I, I'd get, like, Korn Metallica. I'd get, like, Korn this, Korn Rob Zombie, Korn this. It was always Korn on the bill. And then they started headlining, and it'd be, like, you know, other bands I want to see, so I'm always going and seeing Korn. And by this time, I, I think I'm close. Um, I got to be somewhere near the 16 or 17 to 20 mark somewhere with them, and that's without trying, just because, you know, they were opening for everybody at the time. But this is you actively going to see a band. As far away as the Bahamas. As far away as the Bahamas, holy shit. All right, that's enough. That's enough, you see. I mean, I was just trying to have a little side conversation, and it already got that interesting. We can't do it, all right, let's do this. We gotta save it. Sex, drugs, Crystal Old, Sex, Valley, talk .com. Let's go ahead and take a commercial break, and when we come back, looks like Keeney and friends are in the house. They're gonna sing some damn music for us. You guys are gonna get a show, and by the way, let me mention, we are not only broadcasting live on uh, CentralValleyTalk.com, but now the show's broadcast live on Facebook Live simultaneously, all right? And boom, boom. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not upset, it's kind of taken away from some of the YouTube views, but it's getting the show out to a lot of people. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, whether it's your phone, your tablet, your smart TV, I want to thank you for joining in because you're going to get something very, very special tonight. I'm going to introduce you to someone you might not know, and a lot of you watching, I know you already know him. So let's go ahead and take a quick break, and when we come back, 15 pounds of sausage. Oh, it's that man, Mr. Keeney. I love it so much. Sex, drugs, crystal ball, sex, rally, talk .com. Oh, well, 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 my little nasties. Ever since the inception of this show, Sex, Drugs, Crystal Bowl on CentralValleyTalk.com, February 12, 2013 was episode number one. I vowed to bring you one live musical act a week, and this week is actually very different. We're going to talk great detail about Kitty Nation 6 in a little bit, but right now we are very, very lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring to you the Kitty Brothers! <laughs> Paid today, got me a pocket full of change. Just got paid today, got me a pocket full of change. You like working hard all day, step in my shoes, you can take my pay. Well, I was born my papa's son When I hit the ground I was on the run Hey 
Had one good hand and the other behind You can have yours, just give me mine When the hound dog's barking in the black of the night Put your hands in your pockets, everything's all right How y'all doing tonight? Well, I can see it in your eyes There's things about me, baby That you despise And only one thing is coming clear When you're through talking, baby You won't be here But ooh, baby I'm gonna miss you and ooh, baby, it's gonna hurt And I don't know if I can make it I can't remember a feeling worse I can tell by the things you say It won't be long before you're You're on your way But one thing I'd like to say before you go Is that I love you baby And I want you to know That ooh baby I'm gonna miss you and ooh, baby, it's gonna hurt And I don't know if I can make it I can't remember a feeling worse And ooh, baby, I'm gonna miss you And ooh, baby, it's gonna hurt And I don't know if I can make it I can't remember a feeling worse We usually do that with it with an eight-piece band, so this is a little bit different, you know. Oh, that was great. Ooh, whoa, 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 my little nasty centralitalk.com sex drugs crystals. What you watching? Give it up one more time for the Keeney brothers. Yeah. Now you told me something very interesting during the commercial break about that one song. How many? How many of a piece band are you used to doing that song with? Eight. Eight piece band, all right? Now, I wanna go ahead, we'll, we'll mention the event, we'll talk about where the event is, and then we'll talk about some history on it because tomorrow night at Fulton 55, doors at six, first band kicks off 6.30, correct? 6.45, yeah. 6.45-ish, yeah. uh, it's gonna be Fulton 55, it's gonna be Keeney Nation 6! Yeah. Now, I don't know any 
any local event, literally any local event that has even six years under its belt. This will be my third year emceeing the event. Uh, everything you can think of that's great with music and the Keeney Nation you're going to see on stage. An eight-piece band, ha! I laugh at an eight-piece band. You guys will get so many damn musicians on stage at this thing, right? There's gonna be 30 people playing. Oh, 30 different people playing. Th it, there's always a huge jam session that just tops this thing off, that just blows everyone away. Not to mention you see acts. A lot of the folks that you're gonna see performing tomorrow night aren't even active, uh, actively out there performing, some of them. So this is like a, a one night only. If you wanna see some of these people in action, in their element, you gotta be a Keeney Nation Six, right? Yeah, well we got some, some heavy hitters. You know, like uh, Jeff Thurman, is, in his, he's bringing his whole new uh, project again. And uh, he's this is his sixth year. He's He's, he's, he's been involved all six, huh? All yeah. six of them. Jeff yeah, Thurman, Jeff friend Thurman. of the Sex, Drugs, Chris DeVolt show, has appeared yeah. uh, numerous times. I actually think uh, when in 2013 when we started, I think he was somewhere in the first five episodes as the musical guest, I wanna say. Yeah. So he's, he's always in the mix, real reliable guy. And if you you haven't heard him sing. Unbelievable. Right? Yeah. That guy's voice. Now, awesome. let's go ahead and do a little backtracking, though. Right. Let's take me back. So what, 2011? 2011. All right, and you're thinking, what are you thinking when you're tr when you're thinking to get this together? How does it start? How, how it started is that, you know, like my son Michael D, which you're really well, you know, like, uh, you know Michael D real well. Oh, yeah. We were having a birthday party, and, and it, we were doing it at Audie's. And uh, Patrick Contreras, Death Alley Motor Cult, uh, Speedo Geezer, and oh. yeah. So, and uh, the guy who, my brother who owns Fulton 55, you know, like um, he's there in, in the in the audience, and there was a hundred people that couldn't fit inside Audis. That sounds about right. So, you know, like uh, Jaime goes, well, why don't we build a place so we can have you know like these keeny parties? So uh, Fulton 55 was initially uh, you know like brought up and, and just you know talked about, and uh, it was created. At, with us and Patrick Contreras and Michael D. You know, like that's why they played you know, the first show. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Fulton 55 so came Fulton from that. So Fulton 55 was in, was basically born out of the Keeney, out of the Keeney party. I I have I worked a year and a half uh, as a project manager building that, so I I have every brick in the place named. I've, I'm sure I've given you a tour when you were yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's amazing. Now, for all of you that uh, uh, maybe not, might not be from the area, uh, watching Fulton 55 is a very prominent venue here in Fresno. Actually, it's one of the only venues uh, that's still trucking and, and bringing uh, consistent musical acts to town. Um, you'll actually even see, I mean, everyone from a local act to a, hey, fuck, even Smash Mouth's coming. I mean, you're Smash getting Mouth these bands good. that are on tour, and Fulton 55 is a valuable enough venue to where they'll actually stop. Yeah. Los Lobos is coming. I, in, you know, I like saw that. Yeah. I saw that yeah. Los Lobos. Come on, man. You know that yeah. was going to have a shitload of people. Fuck, even though what, you, they had Los Lonely Boys not too long ago. Yeah. My mom was pissed They've as hell she didn't, make, uh, she didn't make that we one. We for rehab there and with, played with rehab. But well, and the best, together, the best yeah. part is, is you get bands that are coming through. You get some local support. You get some people from here in town getting to say, fuck, I opened for Los Lobos. Or I opened for Smash Mallet. You get to say that. I mean, that, that gives you a little clout. So take me back. 2011. So it kind of gets started. What was what was the intention? Did you keep on like, okay, every damn year we're going to do this thing, guys? Like, was that the intention right off the bat? When we started, you know, like what happened is that I started getting sick in about 2011. So the Keeney Nation shows are basically my celebration. That's why they're always in, in July for my birthday party yep. that, that I survived. By the way, happy birthday, man! Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Come 163 out. years old today. Right? 163. 163 doesn't yeah. look a day over 12. Look at this yeah, guy. Look yeah. at this guy. So but, you knew every year. Like, every year this is going to be my celebration. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, so that's what it amounts to is that we celebrate this and that. And, uh... We have you know a set group of people that, like Jeff is always there and and so um, trust me if we couldn't get a crowd Tony wouldn't let us do it the second year and they ask me every year when we're going to do it you know so you know it's 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 a really good uh, event you know and it's an event it's not a show it's it's a uh, you know like you've been there yeah you know it truly that, that, is uh, an event you will be in good company yeah. uh, you're gonna feel like you're hanging out with a uh, family because you are hanging out with the whole damn Keeney there's, family there's a bunch never there. had an argument there never no never any uh, arguments, Five, arguments never any fights nothing security has it real easy at the Keeney Nation yeah. shows yeah. because yeah. everybody who's there no almost everybody knows everybody and then the folks that don't they're there with somebody who who is in the know yeah. you know 
So, uh, and I've been looking. I see a lot of people are going to be, as it always is, a lot of people are going to be passing through tomorrow night. There's going to be a lot of Facebook posts. Don't miss out. You can find links to it all on the Sex, Drugs, Christopher Facebook page, by the way. Don't be lame like that. And with links to the Fulton 55 Facebook page. But when did you, when did you, have you ever thought, because the joke is always, okay, this will be the last one. Um, was there ever a time you really thought, well, shit, this, this is probably going to have to be the last one, like for reals? Key Nation 4, you know, when I brought you in, you know, that that, that was going to be the last one. And uh, somehow I survived, <laughs> you know, basically, you know, like uh, whatever Robocop thing I am these right. days, you know. Um, but no, but uh, uh, 4 was, was heavily pushed to that. So now uh, Josh Tahey, in the, in the, you know, like he wrote up another good thing today. But every year he writes something and he goes, this is supposed to be the last one. So and I said, yeah, we're just like the Ramones, you know. Like, yeah, uh, you're like, exactly. Uh, our, this is our uh, last show, you know, like. I remember when I the first time I saw the Eagles, they were on a farewell tour, and I felt really lucky. And then uh, that damn it, the next time they came around, they were on a damn farewell tour, and I was like, that damn it, it's like a furniture store. They're always going out of business, man. Yeah, kiss is like that. Kiss is like that. You won't see us again. We're done. And then like three years later, they're like, we're coming, Fresno. I'm like, wait, what just happened? Right. So, so let's talk about who's gonna, who is gonna be. How about this? Uh, let's do a quick commercial break. It's very important. Let's have two segments with Keeney and we'll end the show on it. Uh, CentralValleyTalk.com. Sex Drugs Chris Balls while you're watching. When we come back, all the artists that you will see tomorrow night at Keeney Nation 6 and Fulton 55. Slide the knob. <laughs> CentralValleyTalk.com, Sex Drugs, Chris Bowles, what's watching? We have the Keeney Brothers in the house! Yeah. Mike Keeney Sr. talking all things Keeney Nation 6, going down at Fulton 55 tomorrow night. Doors open at 6. Make sure you get there early. It's gonna, we were just talking, it's gonna be a bottom upper level type of situation. They will have to crack that second level, and I can guarantee you, if it ain't already open, they're gonna have to open it at some point during the night. It's gonna be one of those situations, okay? So make sure you get there early, get your drinks. Like we were just saying, that bar is gonna have stretch marks by the end of the night. It's gonna be one of those, okay? Now, you were just telling me we were gonna get into the acts now, but you were telling me during the break something very important. Chris, I'm not feeling time, you said. You said every single act at Keeney Nation is for a per there's a reason. There's yeah. a purpose behind every act. What do you mean by that? Okay, the, the first the first situation down there is going to be the legends of honky tonk, which you know Fresno has a real illustrious past, which I was part of. I mean I know I know I don't look as old as I am, I, I'm 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 cool with that. But you know, like back in, in the in the in the early '70s, you know, like they they had a honky tonk you know era here that was just unreal. So what we're gonna have, we're gonna showcase some of the guys that are on their last leg: Bob Watson, Jimmy Shirley, uh, Rick Norris. Uh, you know, like they're gonna they're gonna be there to. Uh, Recreate, you know, some of the stuff. That's that, what I'm that talking about, folks. You, know, you wouldn't even normally get yeah. to see. They're gonna do it just for this. Yeah, just for this, and uh, you know, like, and in, in, in the, the house band is gonna be 82 Deluxe, which is come on, excellent, excellent band. Uh, Dalton Walker Jr. has, you know, like, been involved in the last three years, and he's God sent. And this time, uh, you know, Richie Blue called me. It's his birthday party too. Hey, Richie. Yeah. You know, and, hey, uh, Richie. You well, know, is three birthdays being celebrated that night? It's gonna be Jim Shirley's, Kevin Keeney. My birthday and uh, oh, shit. and Richie Blue. So four. four of us. Four of us. Yeah. All right, we can do that. We can yeah. put that all in. Yeah, but Richie yeah, called me and he goes, he goes, he's one, ever since we, you know, he came to to uh, hang out with us at when we played with Steppenwolf. We played with Steppenwolf twice. Jeez, so, uh, you know, which is, Jeez, which, the and then they want. I'm gonna that go to, I'm gonna time. go to Hawaii with dope. Steppenwolf in in in, in, in October. Oh, you know, Lord. like I'll, I'll be going to play with Steppenwolf on stage with Steppenwolf. So anyway. Richie Blue called and said he just wants to be part of this show because they're just so much fun. Yeah. So he, you know, like so I said, cool. Then uh, you you play with Eddie Two Deluxe. So the first set is going to be, you know, like the legends of honky tonk, and we're going to kind of dedicate that part of the show to uh, Merle Haggard who passed away this yes. year. And uh, after that, we're going to go into Jeff Thurman Band. The Jeff Thurman Band. Now, uh, is this a recreated, reconstructed Jeff Thurman Band with some of the old parts? Is that new the, parts? the only one that I know that's the same is going to be uh, Kevin Sandlin. Oh, you know, wow, like, okay. uh, Kevin's a wonderful bass player. And, uh, Can I say one thing about Jeff Thurman? He came on, um, it was before one of the Keeney Nations, and I had hosted a thing out at APCAL with uh, him. He was on the bill. 
And he guaranteed me, he was like, you're going to hear a song that you know, we've, we've chosen a really popular song, and then we're going to do it, and we're going we're gonna to do a new arrangement on it. Like, he was going to rewrite the whole arrangement on the song. And so I was, I, it was at Fulton 55, because I remember I was at Fulton 55, and all of a sudden I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking to someone, as I do all the time, with a drink in my hand, and I pause, and I'm like, is that fucking Billie Jean by Michael Jackson? <laughs> and I turn, and the Jeff Thurman man was doing Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, but the only thing that was Billie Jean for Michael Jackson was the lyrics. Billie Jean, yeah. The whole entire song would be rearranged, sounded totally different, and it sounded like a Jeff Thurman original. So I know you're going to get something special in that. See, when, when Jeff first came onto the scene, no, nobody knew him. And, you know, and uh, so I would be sitting here with, with you or Laura or, you know, like Dwayne Hanson or... or, or, Dwayne. or, or I got to do my Dwayne impression. Or, uh, right you know, Dwayne. like... A, Shout out to Dwayne. Hey, hey, yeah. Tower TV, Dwayne. But, you know, I would get down to the stage, you know, the, the part of the lineup, and they'd say, well, what exactly is a Jeff Thurman, and what's it doing on a Keeney event? <laughs> you know, and so... You know, I'd say, he's wonderful. He's really cool. You need to check him out because he's, you know, really cool. I don't have to do that anymore. No. So just to finish up on Jeff, th the third Keeney Nation we did, I didn't call Jeff. You know, and I, I'm coming back from San Francisco at my day job. And uh, yeah. all of a sudden at 10 o'clock at night, I get a phone call, and it's a very irate Jeff Thurman. Oh, Jeff and, Thurman and, and Jeff Thurman up. goes, because what? The fuck is going on? He didn't say fuck. He doesn't but, use you know, that word. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know Thurman. Yeah, Jeff didn't but, do that. But he said, "Why am I not on the on the poster?" And I said, "Man, I you're like well known and stuff now. You know, you you got it going on. I didn't think you want to come do something for me for free." And yeah. uh, since, since then, you know, like Jeff is part of our family. He marries us and he buries us. You yeah. Know? And uh, and and anything that I do. I have not played guitar except for the Steppenwolf shows without Jeff, you know, like on the bill with me. That's great. And I will be doing Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone with Jeff. Oh, you know, that's going to be good. Yeah. It's if you have not heard Jeff sing, some of the most soulful, here's this little song, I Want to Touch Your Body. Oh, Lord, Jeff Thurman, you you man of a man. He, he, he did uh, like a Loving Her Was Easier at the Chris Christopherson show, and I think there was not a dry eye in the house. He's you know? that it, guy. It, it he just, will it, rock it, you just, to just the soul. So after that, you know, like uh, Jeff's going to be doing his thing, and um, then the Keeney brothers are going to come up, and and basically, you know, like we're we're a wall of sound, and you know, like we've been doing this for thirty. If you don't know years. how many Keeneys are musicians, you don't know Fresno. Okay, that's what I'm going to say right now. When you see the amount of talent that's coming out of one family, the amount of string plucking, the amount of calloused fingers that exist between one bloodline, all on friggin' stage pumping out music at the same time, and a lot of the time, just jamming with one another, jamming and churning this out for you as it happens, and you're like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> now I see what the Keeney family's about. The, it, it's, it's spread out, because, I mean, it's... It, 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 play? Uh, and then, yeah, I'm not done yet on oh, that. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so you're like, I'm sorry. He's all, but wait, there's more! <laughs> there's, there's more coming up, but uh, even the band Jaded right now you know, is, is a Keeney uh, act, you know, which is, which is Zolo, you know, and yeah. uh, and uh, Paul Collette and, uh, and and Chris Pierce. You know, like uh, with ex and my and, and, and my, my niece Sherry Perry. You know, Sherry Perry. Who, I just like that who name. played her first show with me when she was eight years old. Oh man, so, See, it's all coming full so circle. Because right there, and we're gonna end the show up with with uh, some some South Valley Keenies called in a band called Tritone Mafia. They have played one other event, but they're they're. I just They're like excellent. that name. Excellent. That sounds like excellent. somebody you could get jacked up by. And then yeah. the Tritone Mafia came in and yeah. we had to leave. We had to leave immediately. Yeah. Like, yeah. But so you, that's, that bill, though, uh, is quality from head to toe. Yeah. There's, it's nonstop. The amount of musicians, you don't understand. Like I said, I was, I was uh, you know, it goes in and out. You're hosting a lot of shows. You're pumped. You know, you're just happy to be a part of something. I know I'd always heard of the Keenies when I was at the Blaze. You know, I'd heard of these Keeney Nations happening. And by part three, I was allowed, I was allowed to host. And I get to this thing, and I was like, holy shit. I was like, I was unable to come to the first two. I was invited to both. And I was unable to go, and Jen Lip and me wanted to go to part two together, and we couldn't. And part three, I was like, Jen, I'm hosting it. I go, I'm going to guarantee to be there that night. I have to be. I'm hosting. And then when I saw what type of show I was in store for, I was like, this is music. Like, this is music. And if you don't think it doesn't exist in the Valley, or there's nothing to do around here, come to Fulton 55. All the details are on the Facebook page. Now, 
I want to do something very special here. Uh, I talk a lot. Fuck, and I talk a lot, all right? A lot of musical guests come in. Five, five, or four years of musical guests. 211 episodes. People traveling up as far as five hours to be on the show and perform. Uh, uh, cast members of The Walking Dead. Cast members of Return of the Jedi. A fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in here one time. And I realized that I talk too much. And sometimes when people make these long treks to the show where they come on and they're leaving and they're like, God damn it, I didn't get to talk about anything I wanted to. I didn't get to bring up anything I wanted to. We didn't get to go into great detail about some of the shit I wanted to. So how about this? For the next 60 seconds, that's right, 60 seconds, it's no longer going to be sex, drugs, and Chris Devold. Oh, no, no, no. For now, it is going to be sex, drugs, and the Kini Brothers! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Randy Keeney. I'm Mike's brother. <laughs> <laughs> just, just thought I'd throw that in there. And, and I'm, I'm the, I'm the, as the Fresno B puts, I'm the, I'm the, 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 how do you say the name with the P? Uh, the, the, I'm the head, the family, uh, the senior member. You know, I'm the, I'm the fault for all this. Yeah. Yeah, he's hey, getting closer. Getting closer. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's had 30, he's had me he's had 31. me next to him playing for thirty five years. We've had a really great great time, and um, guy, we're ready to do another thirty five years. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be doing it, and uh, go out and see Michael at the Chico's on every Thursday night doing his open mic up there. That's gonna be a cool one. Yeah, and uh, also dedicate this to my brother Sam. Yeah, the night, the most important yeah. part of this night, to throw out there in the last seven seconds, is that our brother Sam Metallico passed away a year ago. And uh, we are dedicating the night to him because he was our brightest star and we miss him every, every day. Sex, drugs, and the Keeney Brothers! Yeah. We're going to give it up for Sam. We will be talking about him. And the crazy part is, whenever you do something like that, you know that they're there. So I can guarantee you that Sam is probably pumped for Keeney Nation as well. Uh, a year ago, and that's going to be very. There's going to be so many special things, and so much, so much behind everything you see tomorrow night. There, like you said, there's not going to be a wasted moment or any wasted talent uh, at any point. And I'm just, I'm just happy to be in uh, part of something that that I feel is bigger than me. Because I'm a big guy, and I can't say that a lot. So, uh, but no, literally bigger than me. This is uh, a gem, a gem here to Fresno. Every year that it happens, and every year that you miss out or didn't know what was going on, uh, you're missing out on something very special. So, come be a part of it tomorrow night, Fulton. 55, doors at 6, first man around 645-ish, I will be your MC, uh, Teeny Nation 6, my goodness guys, my goodness, right, it's going to be major, bring your drinking shoes, uh, make sure you Uber, because uh, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those, it's, and by the way, uh, you're Michael, uh, the Chico's, every Thursday night, right, yeah. now did I read, did I get that wrong on Facebook, is he going to start doing private guitar lessons, he's giving lessons right now, he's only got room for about another three, and he's, he's you great. sons of bitches, can I tell you something, he's great, every since I've known him, uh, remember the Fresno State incident? That yeah, was one of the yeah, first yeah. times. That was one of the first times we had you guys on. On everybody's doing it with Chris yeah, and Laura, yeah, yeah. and he was all jacked up and still came on and pulled out that damn guitar and let his fingers make love to it. I mean, his fingers were loving on it. And ladies, ladies, will you shut up? That dude farts on Facebook and gets like 136 likes on his post. You debt, damn you. So go see him at the Chico's. And only three spots it sounds like's left. If you've ever seen him play guitar, uh, the fact... I I was I shouldn't be on my phone in the car, but I am. And I read that he was doing fucking private lessons. And I was like, oh shit. Like, that's kind of major. To me, he's, he's, he's very talented. And for him to devote his time like that, uh, you're very lucky. So please find everything on Facebook. Sex, Drugs, Chris DeVold, Hey, do you guys want to know what the live musical guest is? This next week? Please no, us. no, you like the Facebook page, you lazy stoner. No, Mike, I'm so sorry. I gotta do this in front of you. Right. Uh, Sex Trucks Christopher has a five cut minimum. That's one, alright? Cut, 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 cut. That gets us to four, right? Alright, how about we do the last one together? One, two, three, cut! Right. Sex Trucks Christopher, Sex Valley Talk.com. Slide the damn numb! Central Valley Talk dot com.